Let's go back to about 93 or 94, to a very young time in my life. I was over at my grandmother's house, and my uncle was there with my cousin, and they were playing the NES. Now, I've mentioned this before on the old channel, and I think I talked about it here, but I'll just retell the story real quick, because it's a memory I have a Contra. Both my uncle and my cousin were playing Contra, and doing quite well, and the game had me mesmerized. I couldn't stop watching them play the game. Now, at the time, I knew of Super Mario Brothers and a handful of other games, but I'd never seen Contra before. The graphics amazed me. The music was awesome. The sound effects were something I always remembered. It's one of those games that later on in life, once I got an NES, I always wanted to own the game. Unfortunately, I never did, but I did rent it, and I did borrow it from a relative of mine. It's time for me to finally get around to reviewing Contra. Now, I did a review on my old channel, and if you remember my Modern Gamer Fanboy Reviews series, I did a parody review of Contra. But now it's time for my legit thoughts. Contra was developed and published by Konami and was originally released in the arcade in 1987. It was later released on a variety of consoles and home computers such as the Amstrad CPC, Commodore 64, MS-DOS Operating System, MSX, NES, and the ZX Spectrum. In this review, I'm going to start out by reviewing the arcade version and then check out the NES port. Now, in Europe, the game is known as Gryzor, in some places, Probot Tector. Contra is a side-scrolling and sometimes vertical-scrolling, sometimes 3D, shooter, where you play as Bill Rizzer or Lance Bean. And if you play two players, you can have both of them on screen. Now, Contra is actually censored outside of the United States. For instance, the humans are redesigned into robots. This was done because of the censorship laws in Germany, which prohibits the sales of violent video games to minors. Germany is known for really denutting games because of censoring. And that sucks for those of you who are from Germany. Now, the story of Contra goes like this. It is the year 20. 2631 and a small meteorite has fallen into the Gulaga Archipelago, which is located 20 kilometers northeast of the coast of New Zealand. Two years later, Red Falcon seized the island prepping for an alien invasion. Now you're probably thinking, oh, shit, is this Red Falcon group good guys? Nope, they're, they're a goddamn terrorist group. The Earth Marines send two members, Bill and Lance, who are part of the elite Contra unit, to take down the terrorists, wipe out the aliens as well, busting their ass to save Earth from any more threats, and probably coming home and banging a bunch of whores. There are ten stages you will go through with a boss battle in each, and a variety of enemies ranging from soldiers, turret guns, aliens, and more. When it comes to weapons, you have four different ones. You have a regular one, which is kind of like a machine gun, and then you have a machine gun, a spread gun, fireball, and laser. The spread gun is obviously the best weapon to use because it spreads out firepower towards all the enemies and bosses. There's also two power-ups that you can get rapid fire which helps you shoot faster and then a barrier that is temporary invincibility for a limited time The graphics for the arcade version of Contra are pretty damn good for its time. Now, you got to remember, I didn't see the arcade version until I was about 15 or 16, maybe even a little later, because I figured out how to use MAME. The game looks great, the sprites are nice, the enemies and characters look great, the level designs are nice and different from the NES port, the game doesn't slow down or glitch, the backgrounds are nice, the game is colorful, really nothing to complain about here. The music is great, very well composed, sounds good, especially with how much the arcade can do when it comes to music. The sound effects are good, too, ranging from the explosions, shooting, and so on. Very well done. When it comes to difficulty, Contra can be tough, especially the later you get into the game. And on top of that, you got shit shooting and enemies jumping and all of that all over the place. The first handful of levels are not too bad. It's just you have to time your movement just right and be ready to jump out of the way of some bullets or enemies. Either way, I love the difficulty and makes you earn your way through the game, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. The controls are actually very good. Moving around is easy, jumping is easy, shooting is easy. They are quite responsive. They don't slow down or anything. If I die, I can't blame the controls. It's usually my own fuck-ups. Contra for the arcade is pretty damn fun. The gameplay is great, even changed up a bit compared to the NES port. Obviously, this is the first game, so the NES port sort of changed the level designs up. The graphics are awesome, the music is badass, the controls are good, the difficulty is nice, very few flaws with the arcade version. I really do enjoy playing it a lot. But the real question is, will the NES port be better? Well, time to find that out right now. 
The NES port of Contra was developed and published by Konami and was released in 1988, a year after the arcade version. Now, like a lot of you, this might be the port you know the most, just like myself. Now, it says that it's an expanded port of the arcade version, which it kind of is. The differences of the two games is the levels are a little longer and restructured to a point. Other than that, the gameplay is pretty much the same, so it's time to focus on the graphics, music, and sound effects, controls, and so on. But before I talk about that, obviously everyone knows the Konami code. If you do the code, you get 30 lives. Now, I've only done it a handful of times. The three times I've beaten Contra, I have used the Konami code, but there was one time I did beat this game without save states or the Konami code, which I think is a pretty badass gaming accomplishment. The graphics for Contra on the NES are not bad for an 8-bit console. Granted, you have limitations, and there is some glitching and flickering here and there, but this game looks great. The detail of the levels are nice, the backgrounds are great, the game is colorful, and the right colors, not some off-the-wall goofy shit until you start seeing aliens and all of that. Really nothing to complain about. When it comes to the music, fucking awesome. I love the music in this port. Not only is it badass, it's iconic and retro gaming. It's well composed ranging from the title screen music and each level to the boss battles and so on. The sound effects are good too, and to be honest, just as iconic as the music. The controls for Contra on the NES are good. Moving around is easy, jumping and shooting is easy, and they respond quite well. I wouldn't say they respond as good as the arcade version, but still good enough for me. Really nothing to complain about. Contra on the NES is a fucking awesome port of a badass arcade game. I think with the limitations on the NES, Konami still did a badass job. The graphics are good, even though there's some flickering here and there. The music is iconic and badass, same with the sound effects. The controls are very well done. Very few flaws in this game. There is a reason why Contra is a retro classic, and by far in the top 20 best video games of all time. It's because of how fun and tough the game is. If you've never played Contra, you need to check it out. It's very much worth playing. Now, if you want to pick the game up for yourself, there's a few ways you can. On eBay, if you want the arcade version, it's $200 for the board. Of course, there's a Contra bar top cabinet that looks like it was built from scratch for $825. That's quite expensive. Of course, you can find the game on the Xbox Live Arcade for the Xbox One and the PlayStation Network for the PlayStation 4. The MSX version can be found on the Wii Virtual Console for the Wii U. That is, if you can still get it. And of course, if you don't want to go that route, you can always pick it up on MAME for free. The NES port is 50% rare and prices range from $27.99, $32.92, $33.44, $19, $20, $37, $29.36, $29 and prices in between. The Contra series went on to have many games in it, ranging from Super C or Super Contra, Operation C, Contra 3 The Alien Wars, Contra Force, Contra Hard Corps, Contra Legacy of War, C The Contra Adventure, Contra Shattered Soldier, Neo Contra, Contra 4, and then the last game, Contra Rebirth. There's been quite a few games that have been inspired by Contra as well, one of them being a game known as Hard Corps. Some say it's a sequel. I wouldn't say that. I'd say it's paying homage to the series and very close in gameplay. At a later time, I'll review and possibly do a Let's Play of some of these games in the Contra series. I myself would love to see a new game, but we know how Konami is, and we know that they have their heads up their asses, and it's really sad, but that's the way it goes. And I doubt they'll ever give up the rights to Contra to another developer or publisher. Well, that is it for this review of Contra. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching watching.